Today, let us start with a prayer. This is God. This is me. Put together makes us one. Bow our heads, close our eyes. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you are God of love. You love us so much that you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to this world. That he took up all our sins and died on the cross for us. Thank you so much, God. Lord, as we are in the Passion Week right now, help us to walk with you. Help us to understand your heart. Help us, Lord, to turn our hearts back to you fully. We thank you so much. Please be with us right now. All this we pray in our dear Lord Jesus' name with full thanksgiving. Amen. So children, today is the third day of Passion Week. We call this day the Day of Debate or we can also call it the Day of Defense. Children, do you know the meaning of debate? Let us look at a picture. So 
So, where do you think these two men are? Are they at home or at a public place? Secondly, what do you think they are doing? Yes, you are right. They can't be at home, right? Look, they are standing behind a stand. You don't talk to your family members standing behind a stand, right? So most probably, they are at a public place. Secondly, look at the man. He is pointing. I guess perhaps they are arguing or discussing about a matter. Indeed, this is the meaning of debate. Debate means a formal discussion on a particular subject in a public meeting. So, why is this day called the day of debate or the day of defense? Let us look into it. Do you know, on this day, the third day of the Passion Week, it is the busiest day for Jesus in his public ministry. He spoke the most words today. The religious leaders, the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, they were all coming to Jesus with questions to test him. Our Lord Jesus, he is the God of creation. And thus, He has the answers to all questions. All the answers are in the Word of God. So today, let us go through one of the questions posted by a lawyer to Jesus. The Bible verses is recorded in Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 to 40. Children, if you have your Bible, please kindly turn to Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 to 40. Let us read together. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then, one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So the question posted by the lawyer was, which is the great commandment in the law? Before we can find out which is the great commandment in the law, we need to first know what are the commandments in the law? Let's look at a picture. Children, where do you think this place is? And who do you think this man is? Yes, I know many of you have the right answers. Our God brought his chosen people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. He was to bring them to the promised land, Canaan. And in the wilderness journey, they need to be turned from the slaves to the prince or princess of a new kingdom. To be the prince or princess of a new kingdom, you need to know the laws of the new kingdom, right? Thus, the wilderness journey is the training ground. And over here at Mount Sinai, God gave the Ten Commandments to the people. So the Ten Commandments are the law. 
Now, let us go through the Ten Commandments. The first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. Yes, only one God. Second commandment, you shall not make for yourself an idol, nor bow down to it. So, second commandment, you shall not make for yourself an idol, bow down to it. And the third commandment, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Number three, symbolize W for the word. And number four, two plus two equals to four, you can make a house and a cross. So it's the house of God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Indeed, on Lord's day, we are to go to church to worship Him. So children, the first four commandments are all related to? Yes, to God. It talks about our relationship with God. And you know what? Our Lord Jesus Christ, He is so smart. He summarized them into one commandment, which is in Matthew 22, verse 37 to 38. Let me read for you. Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. Indeed, you may be thinking right now, what about the rest of the commandments? Let us go through them now. The fifth commandment, honor your father and mother. Five, honor your father and mother. Commandment number six. Imagine this is a man, fingers, this is the knife. Yes, you got it right. Commandment number six is do not murder. Do not murder. Commandment number seven. Imagine one daddy and one is mommy over here. Do you want to have one more daddy or one more mommy? No, right? So remember, now commandment number seven is do not commit adultery. And now, commandment number eight. Four, four is eight. Do not steal. If you steal, what will happen to you? You will end up in jail. Okay, so remember commandment number eight. Do not steal. Commandment number nine. We have five and four. Do not bear false witness. Commandment number nine, do not bear false witness. An easy way to remember is, is five equals to four? No. Thus, do not bear false witness. Commandment number ten, do not covet. Indeed. From commandment number five to commandment number ten, who are they related to? They are talking about our relationship with others. Once again, Jesus beautifully summarized them into this one commandment. It is recorded in Matthew chapter 22, verse 29. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Wow. And with this, Jesus concluded with this line, On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Don't you think our God is so, so wise? Indeed. So today, children, let us remember the word of God. As God's children, we need to defend His word. 
we need to be there standing up for Him. Let us remember these two commandments so that we can fulfill all the laws. Now let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father God, we thank you so much for your precious word. Wisdom is from you. You showed us through your answer and you taught us all your word. Let us remember them well so that Lord, we can defend you in this end time. Lord, give us the heart of love. Help us to love you with all our heart, soul and mind and help us to love others as ourselves. We want to shine for you. We want to be called your children. Thank you, Father, so much. We love you, Jesus. All this we pray in our dear Lord Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye, children. Show me your ways, your ways, your truth, your truth. Children, before we end the service, with Lord's Prayer, let us remember to put aside all our offerings for God in an envelope. When we come back to church, we can put everything in the offering basket. Alright? Now, let us recite the Lord's Prayer to end the service. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy work will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. See you, children.